Have you ever thought about the prophecies described in the book of Revelation? This book is full of them, detailing events that will happen before and after Jesus' return to earth. And there's one particular prophecy that is truly astounding, going beyond the imagination of even the most creative minds. This prophecy evokes both admiration and a certain fear, as described in the Bible. Imagine a future event so remarkable that it leads to widespread repentance among those who had previously rejected God and His love. The Bible warns that when this prophecy comes to pass in the last days, there will be no more opportunity for mercy and forgiveness for those who seek them. Before revealing this future event that will astonish the world, it is necessary to explore five other interesting events from the Bible that have already occurred or are about to occur in the near future. After that, we will analyze the most impactful prophetic event for all those who do not follow the teachings of Jesus. Before we begin, I would like to ask you to subscribe to my channel. Just click on the subscription button below the video and enable the notification bell to receive upcoming videos directly on your phone. Have you heard about the Angel of Death? The first event is the arrival of the Angel of Death, also known as the Destroying Angel. This celestial being appeared around the year 1300. It all began after Pharaoh denied Moses' request to free the Israelites from slavery in Egypt. In response to this act of disobedience, it triggered a series of ten plagues sent by God upon Egypt as a consequence of Pharaoh's disobedience. These ten plagues included the Nile River turning into blood, frogs infesting the land, plagues of insects, death of livestock, skin diseases afflicting the Egyptians, total darkness for three days, and finally the visitation of the Angel of Death. After nine refusals by Pharaoh to release the Hebrews from slavery, God instructed Moses to instruct the people to put the blood of a lamb on their doorposts. This way, the angel of death would not enter those houses and would know exactly where to go to punish the Egyptians. Thus, the people of Israel followed God's instructions to the letter. At midnight, when silence enveloped the land of Egypt, the angel of death passed through relentlessly, claiming the lives of all the firstborn. There was no distinction among Egyptian families, from the grand palaces to the humble homes of the workers. The wailing echoed throughout the land as the Egyptians awoke to the terrible scene of their lifeless children. In this dark moment, pain and despair spread, enveloping every home in a veil of sadness. The once bustling streets were overtaken by mourning, as mothers and fathers embraced their lifeless loved ones. The lamentations echoed through the corridors of the palaces, echoing the grief that flooded every corner of the land of Egypt. The tragedy spared not even the livestock, as even the firstborn of the cattle succumbed to the angel of death's fury. Those who once boasted of their prosperity and power now found themselves plunged into grief and anguish, facing the cruel reality of loss. It was a night of indescribable desolation and sadness, forever etching into the memory of the Egyptian people. They were confronted with the harsh reality of their own mortality and powerlessness in the face of divine power. Meanwhile, the Israelites, protected by the Lamb's blood, witnessed once again God's faithfulness and care for His people. The second event is the vision of the depths of the earth, a phenomenon created by God that also occurred in the Old Testament and had Moses as its protagonist. After the Israelites were freed from slavery and were journeying through the desert, a man named Korah led a rebellion against Moses and his brother Aaron as they led the people toward the Promised Land. Korah conspired against Moses and demanded that all be allowed to serve as high priests even without divine instruction. He deemed it unfair that only the two brothers had direct access to the Lord and felt such envy that he managed to attract a large number of Hebrews to his side. God was so outraged by this selfish act that he told Moses he would pour out his judgment on Korah. As there was no repentance, God instructed Moses to have the people move away from Korah and his followers. Then the Lord opened the earth before Korah, his family, and his allies, and they were all swallowed by the depths of the earth along with everything they owned. Thus, these people went down alive to the grave, and then God closed that abyss, causing them to disappear from among the people of Israel. The third event is the appearance of the two witnesses, a prophecy from the book of Revelation that will occur during the years of the Great Tribulation. These two witnesses will be two men who have never died, which means they could be Enoch and Elijah, two faithful servants of the Old Testament who were taken to heaven while still alive. Many also believe they could be Elijah and Moses, as both appeared with Jesus during the Transfiguration. Most importantly, these two servants of God will receive supernatural power from the Lord to perform incredible feats. 
They will appear when the world is under the demonic dominion of the Antichrist, dressed in sackcloth, a fabric usually made of goat's hair, and will prophesy for 1,260 days, which is equivalent to three and a half years. These men will be hated by humanity because they will preach the gospel of Jesus Christ to a completely blind and spiritually lost world. Some will listen, but many will not pay attention to their message. Others will become furious and attack them, but the Bible is very clear that if anyone tries to harm them, fire will come out of their mouths and consume their enemies. This will be an extraordinary spectacle to witness because undoubtedly the Antichrist will be the ruler of the world and will not want anyone to worship the one true living God of the Bible. Therefore, he will do everything to attack these two witnesses. Furthermore, these two men of God will have the power to shut the sky so that it will not rain during the entire time they are prophesying, just as Elijah did when he challenged King Ahab and Queen Jezebel. They will also have the power to turn rivers and oceans into blood and to strike the earth with all kinds of plagues whenever they wish. Thus, these two witnesses will preach with authority throughout the world. God's power will be so strong upon them that they will be literally untouchable, and this will continue until we reach Revelation 11, where the Bible says that, after the three and a half years, the beast that rises from the abyss will fight with them, overcome them, and kill them. Their bodies will lie in the main street of the great city, which will be called Sodom and Egypt, in the same place where Jesus was crucified. For three and a half days, all peoples, tribes, languages, and nations will gaze at their bodies, but no one will be allowed to bury them. The inhabitants of the earth will celebrate the death of the two prophets who troubled them so much and will exchange gifts among themselves in celebration. However, three and a half days later, the Lord will breathe the breath of life into the two dead witnesses, and they will come back to life, causing terror to all those who celebrated their death. Then, a loud voice will come from heaven, telling the two witnesses, continue writing please. Come up here and a cloud will take them away. At that moment, there will be a great earthquake that will destroy a tenth of the city's inhabitants, and 7,000 people will die, while those who remain will be terrified and give glory to the living God. The fourth event is the Armageddon. The Bible says that in the last days of the Antichrist's reign, God will pour out his wrath upon the earth with plagues and suffering for all those who denied him and lived in sin. Even in the face of this scenario, nations will not repent and will still blaspheme against his name. Thus, at the end of the seven years of the Great Tribulation, Israel will be surrounded by the nations that unite with the Antichrist. In Revelation 16, the Apostle John reports that the rulers of the whole world will gather for the battle of the great day of the Almighty God in a place called Armageddon. The word Armageddon comes from the book of Judges in the Old Testament. At that time, the people of God were small compared to their enemies, but in the battle that took place on that same mountain, they emerged victorious. In Revelation, the Apostle John describes seeing the heavens open with Jesus mounted on a white horse, followed by all the heavenly armies, and on his thigh was written King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Then, an angel calls the birds of the sky to a great feast, where they will eat the flesh of all those who died opposing the people of Israel. However, this war will not be like others that lasted for decades. In fact, the Battle of Armageddon will last a short time, as the enemies will be crushed effortlessly. It is at this moment that the seventh bowl of God's wrath will be poured out upon the world. After this event, Jesus will cast the Antichrist and the false prophets into the lake of fire and hell, and all men who served him will be killed and eaten by the birds. Then, Jesus will bind Satan and establish his thousand-year reign on earth, where he will rule alongside his church and also with those who died during the Great Tribulation for not bowing to the Antichrist. Armageddon will not mark the destruction of our planet, as many believe, for according to the Bible, the earth will be the eternal dwelling place for all those who have recognized Jesus as their Savior and have done the will of God. The fifth event is the rapture. The Bible says that there will be a moment when all Christians alive at that hour will simply disappear. They will be busy with their daily tasks, working, studying, or taking care of their homes, when suddenly they will be taken up to heaven. Yes, there is much debate about the rapture. Some believe it will happen as soon as the Antichrist presents himself to the world, while others think that Christians will only be taken up to heaven alive after three and a half years of the Antichrist's reign. Another group believes that Christians will go through the entire period of the Great Tribulation on earth before being taken up by Jesus. Regardless of the hour and day, one thing is certain the rapture will happen. In Matthew 24, Jesus spoke about it, telling the disciples that at the appointed time, two men will be in the field and one will be taken and the other left behind, 
and two women will be grinding with a hand mill and one will disappear. This means that everything will happen instantaneously, shaking the world and affecting everyone. Those left behind, unfortunately, will have to face the harsh reality of the last days, while those in Christ will be filled with joy and will remain in the presence of the Lord for all eternity. And so we come to the end of the five extraordinary events that have occurred in the Bible or are about to occur. This leads us to the most terrifying prophecy of all the coming of the four demonic angels from the Euphrates River. All of this will unfold when the Lord's angels begin to sound the seven trumpets of Revelation. When the first trumpet sounds, a rain of fire mixed with blood will be cast upon the earth, burning a third of the trees and all the green grass. The second trumpet will bring the fall of something like a great burning mountain into the sea, resulting in the death of a third of sea life and the destruction of a third of ships and vessels. With the third trumpet, a great star called Wormwood will fall from the sky, poisoning a third of the waters and causing many deaths due to contaminated water. The fourth trumpet will diminish the light of the sun, moon, and stars by a third, symbolizing a period of darkness. At the sound of the fifth trumpet, an abyss will open, from which locusts will emerge to torment those who do not have God's seal on their foreheads. This event is also known as the first woe, and it is with the sixth trumpet that the most terrifying prophecy of all time will begin to unfold. When the trumpets sound, four demonic angels who were cast down from heaven along with Satan and are imprisoned near the great river Euphrates will be released to kill a third of humanity. They will lead an army of millions of horsemen, causing destruction and death. But the Apostle John says that there will be 200 million soldiers in this army, all wearing red, dark blue, and yellow breastplates, and their horses will have heads like lions, and from their mouths will come fire, smoke, and sulfur. Their tails will be like snakes, inflicting deadly wounds on people. In total, a third of the inhabitants of the earth who remain alive will die, marking the last chance for repentance that God will give to people before they are condemned to spend eternity in hell. However, they will not turn to the Lord and will continue to worship their false gods. Dear brothers and sisters, in this moment of reflection, we recognize that the events described are truly difficult to comprehend as they transcend our human capacity to understand. However, it is important to remember that the Word of God, as recorded in the Bible, is infallible and true. It offers us guidance and comfort, even in the face of the most frightening situations. As we face these turbulent times, it is natural to feel fear and uncertainty. However, we can find peace and security by entrusting our lives to Jesus Christ. He is our refuge and strength and promises to protect us from the day of judgment, leading us to eternal life by His side in the New Jerusalem. In that heavenly kingdom, there will be no room for fear, pain, death, or tears. Therefore, do not let yourself be consumed by worry about the exact timing of these events. Instead, focus on strengthening your connection with Christ. Delve into the knowledge of God's Word, follow His teachings, and live in accordance with His will. In this way, you will be prepared for the challenges that the future may bring and will not be deceived by false promises or misguided interpretations. May we remain steadfast in faith, confident in the promise of the Lord, and vigilant in our commitment to Him. May the peace of Christ reign in our hearts, and may we be strengthened in our spiritual journey. So be it. Amen. If these words have touched your heart, do not hesitate to share them with your friends and family on different social media platforms. Let us join forces to spread.